Hi, my name is Ali Purdeli from cookie.com. I'm going to walk you through some of the new features in Fluid version 2. But first, for those who are not familiar with this widget, let me explain about the widget itself. This is a responsive gallery for Adobe Muse. The widget allows you to create unlimited different layouts for your gallery and it can be used not only for images, but you can also add videos by using the video and link extension and add the thumbnails to other pages as well. This is the look of the widget. You have the controls at the top, but unlike the first version, you can move each button separately. You can add a different font to each button separately, and it gives you more flexibility to design your gallery. And the gallery itself is fully responsive. When I resize the page, you can see that the width and the height of the thumbnails change, and they change the way to keep the proportion of the images and the thumbnails, meaning that you are not going to lose any part of the image. This is something that we didn't have in the first version. So let's see how the widget looks like when you place it in Muse. When you place the widget, you get three different parts. And unlike the first version, that you had all the controls attached to the main body, now the controls are totally separated. And each one of these controls is a widget. And these are actually the category widgets that we had before. And if you want more than two categories, you can simply copy one and paste it. And to assign the images, you can go to the category option. You can type the name of the images, but make sure that if you use the first method, add files for upload, and you type the images, then you have to go to file, add files for upload, and select your images. And you can also move them around. You can hide each one of these buttons if you don't want them. It's not going to disable the gallery or the category if you hide it. It just gets rid of the button. And the other thing that we have here in this new version is the ability to define the second and the third breakpoint. If we look at the preview, when I resize the page, when it gets to a certain point, as you can see, instead of having four thumbnails on each row, I get three thumbnails. And if I shrink the page and the width of the browser gets to 800 pixels on this sample, instead of having three thumbnails, I get two thumbnails. And this is something that you can define in this new version. So I have four thumbnails by default on each row. And when it gets to 1200 pixels, I have three thumbnails. When I say it gets to 1200 pixels, I mean the width of the browser gets to 1200 pixels. And when the width gets to 800 pixels, you get two thumbnails. The other thing about this widget, the new version, is the relationship between the width and the height of the thumbnails. They work the way to keep the images changing proportionally in terms of size, meaning that you're not going to lose any part of the image and the proportion of the images stay the same. Let's say that you have some images that you want to use for your gallery and the dimensions are 500 pixels width and 250 pixels height. Because the height is half of the width here, this proportion stays always the same. And if you resize the page, like what we have in this preview, as you can see, the gallery adjusts the proportion of the images on the thumbnails. We also have a new extension called title and description that you can use to add as many lines of text as you want to the thumbnails on our gallery as a hovering effect. I will also suggest you to go and take a look at some of the samples that we have to see other types of gallery that you can create by using this widget. Thank you for watching.